You want to know how to get people to trust you with their money? With now over $11 billion recovered from the victims of Bernie Madoff's giant Ponzi scheme, We've waited a long time for the innate drama of the former Nasdaq's chairman's self-described one big lie to make its inevitable small screen debut. With the debut of the four-hour two-night Madoff miniseries on ABC tomorrow, we'll have to wait a little bit longer to get the real skinny on the scam that was exposed in 2008, unfortunately. It's not that the Ben Robbins created and written drama based on ABC News' Brian Ross's 2009 book, The Madoff Chronicles, isn't watchable, it's just well, even with a simmering great turn by Blythe Danner as the wine glass clutching wife Ruth Madoff, it sticks far too close to the point of view of the lying Madoff himself, played by an almost endearing Richard Dreyfus, and neglects an obvious bigger picture of a bamboozled and overwhelmed Federal Securities and Exchange Commission, cheated clients, some famous and many not, and a system that rewards the crooked almost up to the end. I'm a rainmaker. I make it rain. <laughs> with a fair amount of fat and a lot of flourishes, this Madoff loses its own plot at too many points underneath the relentless voiceover of its lead and setups of the likes of Frank Wally as a suspicious but on-the-money investigator that just seems to disappear from the show as things actually heat up. In fact, as well cast as Dreyfus is, and he really is, I have to say, despite the script and the direction by Raymond DeFolita, by the time the SEC are ready to pounce on Bernie, you just want them to get it over with. Not so much because he's such a crook, but so you can move on. Ultimately, as the global economy went into near meltdown at the end of 2008, it was Madoff's own sons, Mark and Andrew, who revealed to the authorities that the supposedly exclusive and well-returning asset management portion of their father's firm was actually playing fast and loose with investments and facts to pump up their parents' lifestyle and on the take from newer Peter clients to pay off all of Paul clients. Both of the sons are now dead one by his hand and one from cancer. And Madoff himself was sentenced to 150 years behind bars, and many, of, many of his ex-clients are still out of their life savings. Why? Because people only want to get richer and richer and richer, and they don't want the risk and they don't want the worry. This is a saga, a saga waiting to be told. And maybe, just maybe, when HBO's The Wizard of Lies with Robert De Niro and Michelle Pfeiffer as the Madoff's heirs, it truly will be. As it is with ABC's Madoff, it's just skimming the surface of the crime and the criminal. I'm Dominic Patton for Deadline Hollywood.